Hello, my name is Joshua Yang and I'm part of the 2012 class of Cal IT2 Summer Scholars. I just finished my first year, year at UCSD and I'm a bioengineering biotechnology major. I'm currently doing research in the UCSD School of Medicine Division of Rheumatology under my PI, Dr. Mary Patkor. Currently, my research is on characterizing the role of neutrophil extracellular traps and the role they play in sterile inflammation. Sterile inflammation is inflammation without a pathogenic source. For our model of sterile inflammation, we use a mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a disease that affects millions of Americans, and arthritis is a leading cause of disability. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder and is characterized by bone erosion and cartilage degradation. In our lab, we use the KBXN mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis. In this mouse model, we cross KRN transgenic mice on the B6 background with Nod mice, and these mice spontaneously develop rheumatoid arthritis-like symptoms. This can be seen in figure one on this KBXN mouse, which has significant paw swelling. This disease is dependent upon both glucose 6-phosphate isomerase, or G6PI, autoantibodies, and neutrophils. Neutrophils are your first line of defense in an infection. One of the ways that neutrophils exert antimicrobial activity is through a process known as netosis, whereby neutrophils extrude their nuclear DNA into a web-like structure known as a neutrophil extracellular trap, or net. These nets ensnare bacteria, helping to facilitate clearance. However, nets have also been found in sterile inflammation, whose, and their role has yet to be defined. Knowing that KBX in mice have higher neutrophil activity, we wanted to determine whether KBX in mice had higher levels of circulating free DNA. To do this, we did a picogreen assay, which detects levels of DNA in a sample by fluorescence. We tested the plasma of KBX in mice and wild-type sibling mice to, in order to determine the levels of circulating free DNA. What we found was that KBX in mice have increased levels of circulating free DNA over their wild-type sibling mice to a statistically significant amount. There are many possible reasons for this. One of them could be that KBX in mice have a deficiency in DNA activity. In order to test this theory, we used a DNA assay where we titrated the sierra of KBX in mice and wild-type sibling mice in order to determine the relative levels of DNA activity. What we found was that KBX in mice have similar levels of DNA activity compared to wild-type sibling mice, or in some cases had even greater activity. Thus, there had to be some other reason for the increased levels of circulating free DNA that we saw in the KBX in mice. We then wanted to determine whether uh, KBX and SARA would cause increased net release. So to do that, we did a DNA stain on neutrophils in order to visualize their nuclei. In figure four, panel B, we see that we see unstimulated resting neutrophils. There, are, there is no net release in this figure. However, in panel B, we chemically stimulated neutrophils to release nets, and we see high levels of net release. In panel C and D, we used heat inactivated wild type SARA and heat inactivated uh, KBXN SARA, respectively, in order to determine the relative levels of net release. We see that in panel C, there is some net release, and in panel D, there's higher levels of net release. In order to quantify this, we determined the percent of net release in these neutrophils with the various stimuli. As we can see in figure five, the chemical stimulus had very high levels of net release. We also find that the unstimulated resting neutrophils here show low levels of net release. We find that the heat inactivated KBXN sera caused very high levels of net release in the neutrophils that was statistically significant over the unstimulated neutrophils. We see that the heat inactivated wild type sera does not cause statistically significant net release over the unstimulated neutrophils. We then wanted to see how much double-stranded DNA was released by these neutrophils. Correspondingly, we find that the neutrophils chemically stimulated had high levels of double-stranded DNA release. Similar to figure five, the unstimulated neutrophils had low levels of double-stranded DNA release. We find that the heat inactivated KBXN sera caused high levels of double-stranded DNA release, while the heat inactivated wild type sera had low levels of double-stranded DNA release. Overall, we find that there is some factor in the KBX and SARA that causes net release, but this factor has yet to be identified. We find that KBX and SARA causes increased levels of net release over, their wild, over wild type mice, SARA, and that there must be some factor in the KBX and SARA that causes increased net release. This factor has yet to be identified. 
Additionally, we find that KBXN plasma has increased levels of circulating free DNA. Whether this DNA plays a beneficial role or de detrimental role in the pathogenesis of this mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis also remains to be determined. I would like to thank the Cal IT2 Summer Scholars Program for this opportunity. I would like to thank the members of the core lab, specifically my PI, Dr. Mary Fatkor, um, Lisa Roniker, Christopher Chung, and Tuina Srivastava.